Hello folks, I hope uh, you can see me and hear me clearly. I'm just going to check the volume data and all of that. Make sure that um, the, the, the tech is working fine. So we are uh, doing uh, naming things. I just want to make sure that you can see me and hear me clearly before we go and do anything else. So have a dashboard here, the good, good team at 2IM. They put together some wonderful stuff. So it, it helps me um, have a look at multiple screens to know whether you can, can, can hear me and uh, see me clearly. Uh, in case you're not able to see or hear clearly, please uh, type in on the comment window saying, hey, something's not good, something's not proper. So I'm going to want to just look at the chat window very quick. Um, update feedback from you guys, and then we will uh, we will jump in and have a, a very quick discussion. So to, I don't want to make sure, I'm, I won't want to go into detail into this number and that number and slot comparison and session comparison and all of that. And so just a broad overview of how things were. And then uh, we, 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 I hope you guys can see and hear me clearly. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to maybe, maybe spend another 30 seconds to know what, what is happening here. There is some disturbance in the audio, I don't know. Um, I will just see if I can reverse that. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, is my audio better now? Are you able to hear clearer now? Hopefully, it should be big. Mic has a little static. Uh, what is your slot? My slot, mine slot one. Eighty to ninety-nine percent range. We will have a stab at that, but not this early. We'll do it in our uh, uh, eight o'clock session. Eight, I think we have a session at eight thirty. Then we'll do it with some more data with our hand on our hand. So I don't want to. Venture out, we will give a broad overview. Oh, perfect now, lovely, lovely, lovely. Audio is clear, lovely, 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 lovely. Wonderful. So I'm going to jump in. I'm going to do a very short session, not a very long one. I'm sure you guys have seen. Uh, first of all, best wishes to our uh, slot three folks who are, who are just about now streaming inside and, and, and going into their rooms. All the best. I think uh, Bharadwaj is taking the slot three exam. Uh, best wishes to all of them. I hope those of you who have done either slot one or slot two are not feeling too poorly. At the end of it, we all end up always coming out of the exam saying, hey, I could have done this better and that better. That always happens. It's all right, it's not the end of the world. Sometimes, very frequently, we feel like, hey, I could have done that little question much better. And so I, I took slot one. Uh, the paper was super tiring, as usual. I, I usually get tired at the end of CAT, and that happened. I'm going to give my first thoughts about how I found each section. Uh, VARC, I thought, was uh, uh, very pleasant. The passages were very readable. It was a lot of fun. The questions were not too ambiguous. I got some passages which I wanted to read. I mean, if there are two more paragraphs, I would have read that. It was actually a very uh, uh, pleasant reading. There was one passage where the reading part was uh, tough, which I think was a passage that talked about utopia and dystopia. One passage which I found the questions particularly tricky, which, is, which had with some, some, some uh, Mayans and classic mind uh, theory, which I found that the passage was fine, but the questions were a little bit vague. The other two passages were actually uh, pleasant, readable, and with nice questions. And so the questions were uh, questions dealt with the nuance of the passage. If you read the passage well, and you had sufficient idea about what was being said and what was not being said. And the questions were uh, were doable. Uh, you, you, all of us would get some questions wrong, but it was nothing unusually difficult. Uh, in the way the questions were structured, unusually, nothing unusually difficult in the, the passages. The passages were not too lengthy. There were only four passages of four questions each. So, reading comprehension was par for the course, just as usual. Nothing dramatically different. What I found different was uh, VA. VA I actually thought was uh, more pleasant than usual. Usually in para summary questions, I find choices to be annoying. In sent para jumble questions, I find the, the, the sentence structure to have multiple paragraph things. This time, VA was, uh, was, was pleasant. So there was a the VARC, I would, I would put VARC as uh, easier than CAT 2020. And so compared to last year, this year, VARC definitely, I'm talking more from the point of view of slot one, less from slot two. Slot two, I'm yet to, I've heard feedback from people, but I'm yet to digest it and speak to others. But, uh, but I would put VARC as a smidgen easier than that last one. That takes us neatly to LRDA. LRDI was a nightmare. LRDI was a mess. I didn't find uh, too many. I didn't find. I got really stuck in one puzzle. I had a nightmare. I had a complete nightmare. I, uh, I not only missed that section, that set me up for a poor quant as well. 
the 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 puzzles were not fun they were they were annoyingly long winded creepy puzzles cat cat usually has one thing with nuance where you grab something and then it falls in place and you feel good and uh, and some fun that the puzzle gets filled but here were too many variables too many constraints and there was no no there's no aha factor for the puzzle there's one which was pure di which is just mark this chart find this graph uh, find how many what is the percentage growth which one had the maximum growth what is the growth from this year to this year in the middle category beyond this many million how many had more than that much growth some data some uh, mcq that that di puzzle was a must do especially because the other three were tricky so the questions 20 questions were 4 6 4 6 so it was 2 6 question puzzles and two four question puzzles one four question puzzle was annoyingly tough the other four question was a di one so you had to get the di right and if you got one more six question one right you were on fire uh, if you got more than that right you are flirting with the, with the extraordinary percentage so if you're getting 10 questions there there about you are on fire you are flying uh, if you're doing only the di the pure di four sets and two more questions so six questions seven questions that should be enough to get a good percentile in this section so six seven questions you are coasting past all percentile cutoffs uh, 8 9 10 then you are fire 14 16 14 i don't know how people get 14 16 right i thought tilr was therefore tougher than last year because the same 40 minute section lesser room as far as question selection was concerned more annoying puzzles than even last time so uh, compared to last year lr di was uh, tougher by uh, by as we said because the the going from five sets to four sets made question selection tricky one of the four question set was annoying so you had to do one of the six ones after you did the six ones and the di ones you barely ever have time for doing one more so best case scenario or in most cases is 10 questions and if you get stuck somewhere god forbid uh, like like i did then you are in trouble so 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 my it's a very tricky but because so many people are going to suicide between four questions right and eight questions right where you got three questions out of the di puzzle right and one or two outside of that but nothing more than that going to be very few getting 11 12 13 right if you got 11 12 attempts in di or flying you're getting a rock star lr di percentage and so that's with lr di coming to quant um, as usual by the time you come to quant you're tired this is a, this is a, uh, quant has uh, i had a very interesting discussion with uh, rishabh bandhide from, from hr mentor i told them that i found quant uh, challenging we made a very beautiful distinction for them said look you're saying challenging the implication is that it is tough the questions were not per se tough but they were time consuming that is true there were all several questions from arithmetic several percentages and profits pipes and systems work time uh, some sequences question uh, ratios and mixtures question allegations questions several from uh, what you would call classify as simple arithmetic there were three four from uh, three four from algebra and logarithms three four from there one question from permutation combination one from what can be categorized as number system but practically none after that uh, and three four from geometry so it's a nice mix of questions but if you look at the questions there was nothing from uh, hardcore probability nothing from trigonometry coordinate geometry there was nothing even from mensuration nothing from uh, reminders factorials or cranker part nothing from functions and graph nothing from set theory and the, the, the one or two inequalities questions that's what with, with algebra one or two with quadratic equations but nothing from polynomial nothing from partial fraction if you, if you listed down all topics in quant and said by and large these are the simpler topics and these are the tougher topics you put them into buckets of say 60 70% of the topics are simpler 30 40 is tougher it's practically nothing from the 30 40 tougher topics having said that the 60 70% which is the easier topic the questions didn't make it easier the questions were tricky they were long pointed you had to take one idea put it and plug it into another and then solve you have to take a quadratic equation solve and then think about how many solutions could be there the inequalities had modulus sitting in them so there was it was a it was a good old uh, uh, simple topic but really cramped up uh, uh, computational challenge there was nothing that was conceptually too difficult the, the really conceptually testing idea uh, interesting ideas were from geometry and a little bit from uh, uh, algebra and those are the ones you need to know an idea or really grab on to something and solve those were interesting challenging even but the vast number of questions were from arithmetic where if you sat down you could took a very good nine chart student and said look i'm going to give you 6 minutes please solve this question here she is going to do that 
the, the level of the, the annoying part of this was you take one value, substitute another, verify, check, go from there's no e, there's no nice answer. There's the closest integer to nicest number to questions where you have to find the value and then plonk in something and lots of computation. There's no there's no just okay okay this should work like this should work like this. I'm getting to the answer. There's nothing that you could do quickly. I found one or two questions that were bleeding obvious that you could answer quickly. But outside of that, of the 22 questions, 20 of them involved some computing, solving, and jotting down. Uh, so it was very tiring, very time consuming. So I, I would put quant as uh, doable, but time with extreme time pressure. From what I'm hearing in slot two, was uh, the, the quant element was um, even trickier. The sense that the questions were even more time consuming. I wanted to work were even tougher. Whereas the VRC was, uh, was simpler. From compared to last year, PRC is smidgen simpler. LRDA more or less the same level, but slightly more painful because the, the, the question selection conundrum is super. In LRDA, I actually saw myself get in trouble time-wise, in enormous trouble timing-wise. I took a long time to solve the first set, which I for some reason said, look, I'm going to take the six question set and uh, destroy it. It didn't work out. So, but I saw myself answering my first question after half the time section was over, which was annoying and uh, very stressful. Which also led to a scenario where I answered the first set, I answered the DI set, and I had lots of time. I had about three, four minutes in LRD where I could do nothing, where I could do nothing in that because the, the six question set that I didn't see properly, there's nothing you can do in three, four minutes. The other four question set, there's nothing you can do in three, four minutes. I just stared at that looked at three, two theta questions and marked them as three and three. So, and, and that completely, uh, the fact that I was just staring at the timer go down doing nothing for two, three minutes set me up very poorly for quant. Uh, I must say that I really uh, outperformed in, in being a very naive test taker. Those mistakes taken 10 cats. I shouldn't have done that mistake, but hey, there you go. I did an experienced, uh, more or less a veteran at taking this exam. Uh, and I did the rookie mistake. I let the section two's uh, creepy performance completely wind me up for section three. And so I made silly errors. I, I kept making computation errors. I, I kept finding answers which are not there in the choices. And I would rub my eyes and say, this is not rocket science. I know what I'm doing here. And then I'll find that I've, I've done eight into seven is 58 or some nonsense like that. And come back and fix it and find the answer. And that would annoy me even further. So I did all the temperamental mistakes one could do uh, in the exam. I'm, I'm quite a peeved with myself for that, but hey, that's a that's a separate story. It's not a not an important thing for for the context. So the way I would uh, categorize it, VRC was a smidgen easier, especially because VA was simpler. You had confidence in marking answer choices, which I found to be lesser in CAT 2020. You would mark choice B and feel like it was right. You would write down a chance for para summary and feel like that's a nuance. That's a, that's a thing that we should be not missing. Oh, beautiful question. They've grabbed that. And I have grabbed that. I feel nice about this. Oh, para jumble, this 4, 3, 1, 2 makes sense. Oh, sentence five does not fit in here. That's the elimination question. So you found, you found yourself marking answers that little bit more confidently in VRC, especially VA, which I simply didn't find last year. So that, I think that is, a, that is good. LRDA was a mess because of question selection. Quant anyone who's... Um, super experienced, super savvy with simpler topics, doing tons of questions and can put their head down and do computation solving quickly. They would have this. Anyone whose uh, who's fundas are not clear, uh, they, would have, uh, they would have struggled with it because nothing was linear and straightforward. Everything went to, you had to take something, plug it into something else and solve a different equation to get into. They wouldn't give you a quadratic equation, say, how many square roots this would have. They'll give a quadratic equation, the model is sitting in, and they'll not ask you how many solutions are there because there's a modulus sitting in. They'll take a quadratic equation, put a modulus in, equate it to some k, and then say, if this has three solutions in for x, how many values can k take? So it's involved. You had to know the funda and figure it out and then come back and, and grapple with it. So it was so properly uh, challenging in, 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 in that context. So, which is, um, so th therefore, it was tiring. So difficulty, level of difficulty wise, uh, VRC smidgen easier, LRDI tougher because the question selection conundrum is uh, creepier, quant uh, challenging because of the time pressure, not because of the conceptual difficulty. I, mean, I completely uh, got that one. I said it was tough. I was feeling that it was really tough. It was not tough conceptually. 
practically no question that is impossible. There's practically nothing that is not attemptable. So you could sit there and attempt it. In the moment, it, that, that, that correct idea striking you and then taking it through to completion uh, without getting tired and losing time, that was a challenge. So it's a bunch of simple topics, uh, multi-layered questions under intense time pressure. The time pressure angle is what uh, uh, was, was creepy as far as quant was concerned, not the level of difficulty. Lovely. I'm going to have one look at the uh, uh, chat window. Lovely. Uh, I'm going to have a look at the questions broadly, what the, what the theme was. I'm not when going to venture into percentile uh, prediction expectation for, uh, for now. We will have a go at that. Uh, broadly, my gut feel is whatever numbers were there for last year, we're going to have uh, slightly lesser numbers for, for this year. Um, I, I think if you, get, if you got somewhere from 97 to 101, that's, that's, that's going to be the ballpark for getting 99th percentile. Uh, it's, it's a discussion I had with uh, Hitesh and uh, Rishabh as well. And they were also they were like, yeah, yeah, probably that's the ballpark. So I had a couple of huddle with a few guys. Uh, obviously, we'll, we'll, we'll have another look, digest slot 2, and then take in slot 3 as well, and then come back. Uh, correspondingly, what will be for 90th percentile, a uh, score of 74, not even 74, 71, 72, uh, 72, 73, there, there about should be a 90th percentile. You've got one killer section where you're getting uh, really good marks, then 94, 95 becomes more easily in, in, near grasp. And so, so 97 to 101 for 99th percentile, I think that's the ballpark you're looking for, which is a, which is a high number to get that percentile, but the percentile is tough. Uh, perhaps for, for 95, let's think about it. We'll probably get 90 marks thereabouts. Uh, for getting 95th percentile, 89, 90, 91, there, thereabouts for 95th percentile. For 90th percentile, 73, 74, maybe 72 to 75, that's the ballpark. Again, we will, uh, we will revisit this more aggressively after having digested everything from different slots and uh, taken it and spoken to people, all of that. Probably the opinion we're saying now is based on my experience more than what I've gathered from slot 2. I will have to sit down and gather stuff from slot 2 and slot 3 digest it and then, and then have a crack. In the end, after all of that, our percentile predictions are more or less just random numbers. So very, very few can get it right. Whoever gets it, is getting it right is just happen to be right on the day. So don't let that uh, prediction angle come the way. I know all of us are curious, say, hey, this is what I did, this is the number I'm looking for. Uh, probably you're not going to get a definitive number. And anybody who gives you a definite number has no basis for that. So, so keep that in mind. So the 90th percentile number should be uh, probably, in the, uh, just take a stab at it, should be around the 70, 70 mark ballpark, probably a little lower. So I was saying last year 90th percentile was around 65. The max marks reduced, it's obviously 90th percentile will be lower than 60. Correct, 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 correct. I'm getting my numbers mixed up. Sorry for that. The 90th percentile number will be will be lower than that. I think that's, a, that's quite a while to go from 99 to 90. Uh, I, I, once again, we will have a crack at digesting the percentile numbers and then, and then putting together something together when we come for our uh, session at 8.30. Right now, just want to just start, have first cut thoughts about slot one mostly. So VRC is much easier than last year. LRDI tougher because of puzzle selection being trickier. Quant uh, not difficult but heavily time consuming with a lot of uh, multiple ideas coming from there. Heavy bias towards arithmetic. Hussein had asked a question saying why should we, uh, how to handle anxiety over LRDI and the choices. It is there, my friend. It's going to take a couple of days to get out of that. Maybe at least a day to get out of that. Uh, if you poke around, just, just take it all in. If you're feeling good about it, takes, go through those sessions and analysis of different places. See what they are saying. Digest that number. See whatever places in the internet we can scroll and get some input about. Do that. 
but at some point of time you got to say hey enough i've had this the answer key luckily enough the answer key is going to be out uh, in about 10 days time usually usually it would 10 days from cat to answer key so i would put it as december 7 or 8 once we get that we'll know exactly what marks we have scored so forget about this we'll wait for that right. i'm not going to jump deeper into percentile prediction thing one i don't have too much basis for that to have not digested numbers from slot 1 slot 2 slot 3 yet we will do that we'll have a broad stab at that a little later on today but i've never been a fan of making that i've never uh, I, I do not think i have the basis for having any accurate percentile prediction after the data comes with a different ball game but pre data it's just a hunch and i don't want to, the hunch to be a, a basis for any kind of prediction after that. did you attempt the publication said no i didn't <coughs> i didn't and i later came to know that that was a doable simpler and i didn't anaga ke 65 mark can expect ma at 65 it should be north of 90 but probably not north of 95 right. we will have a better determiner broadly for this later on uh, but even that's going to take some time which is a harder slot we don't even know uh, look last time i remember uh, the whole world said one slot was tougher and it turned out that, that slot was the easiest so it's very difficult to say that without the numbers so don't worry don't don't listen to people who say slot one match was easier than slot two slot two verbal was tougher there is no credible basis to compare this and everybody makes opinion based on second order opinions of somebody else's cousin it doesn't work you can't credibly compare slot one brc and slot two slot one quant and slot two and slot one lrdi and slot two slot so by and large the, the level of difficulties are not wildly apart that we know that that's been the pattern for the last several years so this year my gut feel is that vrc was a smidgen easier lrti trickier because of there being fewer puzzles quant definitely having a lot of long winded time consuming questions which made it a challenge rather than being conceptually tough why lrdi is getting tougher every year lokesh i haven't the faintest idea lokesh i'm getting super peeved with lrdi as well so about 3 years ago lrdi had more uh, beautiful puzzles more puzzles that you could that you could engage with uh, that needed some nuance to crack these years it's just writing down constraints and, 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 and plugging them in a table and evaluating five possibilities so there's no not much nuance to them and they 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 they're, they're not as much varied as being randomly challenging very easy to create a very very tough lrdi puzzle so just take away two constraints and create four variables four possibilities till the last step and then finally it becomes two things so so, so i think they have cranked up the difficulty without miss and lost out on quality a little bit i don't know why they do this in 2015 when they made the shift to making di kind of counterintuitive lrdi is a different section uh, it seemed to change the ball game it seemed to say like hey, i know you can crack your quant by studying i know your reading habit you have a crack at brc i'm looking for uh, some x factor and that sits in my lrdi section and that was nice because you could not really sit down and memorize 25 templates or 1000 words to to crack this section so you needed that little bit extra which is nice but then they've taken that to a point where it is super uh, difficult and i don't know why they do this especially in the 40 minute context it is even tougher now with six question sets i don't know i don't know what their idea is okay. don't have a say on that won't the cutoffs reduce compared to last year i think they will i think almost all cutoffs will be less fewer last year particularly driven by quant because the brc there are only two questions fewer but the paper was simpler so the brc numbers will remain more or less the same lrdi was four questions fewer but nobody attempted 21 22 questions anyway so the relevant number was going to be the same number of attempts this time i think it was tougher because the question selection conundrum was there so lrdi numbers are going to be slightly lesser quant even though it was uh, time consuming because there were, uh, there were fewer questions but the questions were not challenging or compellingly tough conceptually since there are fewer questions i think the quant scores like for like are going to be 10 15 percent lesser whatever score fetched you 99th percentile last year 15 percent lesser than that will fetch 99th percentile this year because four questions out of 26 is, is a big swing that same number will flow through everywhere so i think all cutoffs will be lower driven largely by 
the quant number. Which sets did you attempt for LRD? I'm not going to answer that anyway. But the results and response sheet will all come through. That will be, be, uh, that'll come through. Don't worry about predictions too much. Don't worry about numbers, percentiles, all score. There is a certain ambient adrenaline and, 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 and some energy in the air now. So we want to see this and check out that review and this, uh, this prediction and that report and this score answer and this thing on YouTube. Do that. You can get it out of your system. Uh, but none of this is cast in stone. Well, several of the predictors get several things wrong, even after the data is out. So there's no basis to any of the prediction. There's no basis to comparing slots. There's no basis to comparing uh, percentiles. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, some gut feel that helps you digest this number. That's about it. So don't, and then in the end, in 10 days, the hard data is going to be there. Probably another 30 days, you'll have your number as well. So don't worry about it. How they normalize? Shall short one get extra score for LRDI, CBA? Well, I have no idea. There's no idea even to say that uh, their, their normalization algorithm is beautiful and completely shared. So we did a video on uh, normalization for last year, which on CAT 2020 analysis, we did the exact math that they were doing. So it, it explains how the math works, how the percentile number works. Give that a go. It's not easy to understand, but at least you know the basis for that. Uh, but uh, their normalization usually works. We don't know what is the easier section. We don't. It's incredibly tough to judge easier section based on opinion of six people. Incredibly tough. Score 55 would be 99, 95th percentile. I doubt that. I doubt that. I think 55 would be closer to 90, probably even lesser. Uh, tips for IAFT. Forget about CAT. Uh, throw it out of the window. Take two days. If it's emotionally invested in CAT for such a long time. Take a couple of days off. Today and tomorrow. Definitely. Uh, take some mocks. Be switched on back into the game. Don't let, uh, don't let the feeling of having crossed a peak after a CAT get to you. Don't feel like... <sighs> and then lose all intensity happens to several people, don't let that drop in intensity happen just because one big exam is out. Last year 95 was at 75, but possible. I, I have to look at last year's number, this year number. My cut feel is whatever, if, if X mass got 99 percentile last year, 3-4% uh, less than X will get the same percentile this year. That's all. Simple rule of thumb. Let's say, let's say, cat 2020, cat 2021, some x percentile, y marks got it, 0.96 y or 0.97 y would get that. So if 100 marks, Maybe even 0.95 or 96. 100 marks got some percentile last year. 96 marks or 95 marks would get the same percentile this year. Driven largely by quant. And largely by, by quant. Because in LRDI, there's going to be a difference. In BRC, there's going to be a difference. But uh, quant is going to be the, probably the bigger driver. Predominantly because there are four fewer questions. And that makes a difference. The marks will be fewer. LRDI, there being two fewer questions. Four fewer questions hardly matters. It doesn't change much. BRC, two fewer questions with the paper was slightly easier. It doesn't more change much. But uh, the, the, the quant thing will know. So if any of you is confident about this link, you can probably extrapolate this link. So it's the same percentile. If Y marks got it last year, 4% lesser, 3% lesser, 5% lesser, we'll get that. At least that is my, my gut feel. Again, no basis for this. Apart from me saying, look, this is how I think it is. <laughs> Several of you are asking what can what will the percentile be. We'll try to have a stab at it in slightly more concrete form uh, this evening. But I'm not going to venture into anything deeper than that uh, right now. More a curiosity excite. There's no basis beyond plucking a number from the hat and saying, hey, this is what I feel it will be. And the one thing that I can I can say for, uh, for from last year to this year is that VRC is going to be the same level. LRDI is slightly tougher because the selection, question selection was trickier. Quant slightly tougher because fewer questions. So, uh, the, the time pressure was higher, even though there were fewer questions. Mark level is going to be lesser because there were fewer questions. 
Was slot two tougher than slot one in your opinion? I have the faintest idea. Um, only thing I can say is there is nobody who can make a credible comparison now. The results and answer keys, all of that will be out. Once they are out, we can compare the average score, standard deviation, normalization, all of that. And then make predictions later on, if you, maybe, maybe two weeks from now. Nothing now. We can say nothing now. Slot 1 VRC was hard. Uh, it was hard, but I, I remember we're again saying it, all of this hard, easier, vis-a-vis -vis what we have come to expect and get. I thought the slot 1 VRC was easier than, slightly easier than last year, especially because even though RC was the same level, VA was simpler. I read that IFT generally tends to be tougher than CAT. Other questions in quant are uh, sometimes it's a mixed bag. There variance uh, range of difficulty is higher, and some questions in IFT are uh, boring, and some are super interesting. So there's a there's more um, randomness in the IFT paper, also the XAT paper compared to CAT. On an average, the IFT paper quant is a, it's a, about the same level of difficulty as, as CAT. XAT is probably a couple of notches tougher. Slot 2 was lengthy as compared to slot 1. I don't know what is the basis for slot 1 versus slot 2 comparison. I'm not going to make that. I'm not going to jump in and, and discuss that. If overall percentile increases by QH, then CAT is becoming more of an engineer. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. If anything, I would say this exam was more suited to non engineer which is nothing. Uh, in from a tougher topics. There's nothing in function, nothing in graph, nothing with multiple variables, nothing with cubic equation, nothing with polynomials, nothing with coordinate geometry. You could have got this paper 99.5 percentile knowing only arithmetic and geometry. And nothing else. A good tension student would have uh, could have kicked ass in this paper. So there's nothing here that is favoring engineers in any form whatsoever. Ten attempt in DILR is fantastic. This is uh, Aryan drag. Ten attempt is fantastic. It obviously, it depends on your accuracy, but otherwise, ten is fantastic. Once again, I'm not going to jump into percentiles. I'm not going to talk about uh, slot one versus slot two. I'm not going to work, jump into percentile predictions. Neither of that is. Uh, I, I'm not equipped to do anything either one really well, I, and I'm not going to have have a stab at that. Slot one versus slot two. We're not doing it now. Maybe at the end of the day, after we have heard slot 3 also, we'll, we'll think about it. Nothing now. And uh, percentile prediction, we're not doing that. Maybe at 8.30 when we do our session after all three slots are done, then maybe we'll, have, we'll give some kind of broad overview, but nothing now. Work hard. Work hard for your IFT, XAT. Um, have fun preparing. Uh, digest this. It's usually you finish the exam, you feel like, look, I could have done two more questions better, three more questions better. I've always felt it. I've always felt it. I was super peeved at the end of this scat for, for what I'd done in my quant. In LRD, it was all right. I got in trouble, I paid a price. I'm super peeved that I paid a price in quant because of the trouble I got in LRD. Especially after standing in this very place and, and, and telling all of you guys to never do that. Uh, but it happens, stuff happens. Any which way, it's not the super most important, crucial day in your life. It is not. Believe me, it is not. Uh, so, so that, that feeling that, hey, I could have done better is going to be there for, for several people. For some where it is almost a lost cause, where you know that you've thrown in 10 months into it and you know today it's not going anywhere. It's still all right. It's still all right. Not the most important exam in your life. It never was. It's not going to be. So those of you who feel like, khatam, this is done. I don't even want to look at all the scores. I know I've not cracked it. Uh, and sometimes we get that feeling and sometimes that is right also. Uh, it's still all right. Uh, pick yourself up in a couple of days, have a go at IAFT. Any which way, pick yourself up in a couple of weeks and have a go at XAT. We've had stories of instance, several instances of guys getting below 90th percentile in CAT and scoring 99.8 in XAT. It's just another day, um, another set of circumstances. A couple of things go your way and, and, and you feel good, you, you, you nail that. And the 99 point Eight in X80, you can go places to every place that uh, I may be C graduate can go. Almost everyone from XLRI can go to. So there's there's nothing holding you back. So that feeling that some might be feeling saying, look, I, I blew it. You didn't blew it. It's a two-hour pressure cooker exam. This happens. Not 
it's up to you to tell yourself that you didn't blow anything. It's, it's not just life. And so don't, don't be too hard on yourself. Pick yourself up sooner or later. Digest the scores in some form and then, and then march on to the next one. And it was wonderful interacting with all of you through this year. Uh, and the, the, you know, the comments and chats and the messages you send us are super useful, super valuable. It keeps us going. We're going to have another session at uh, 6.30, more like a panel discussion. But the four, three, four of us are going to sit and discuss slot one and two all over again. And at 8.30, where we'll, where we'll come out at 8.30 in some form with some broad outline for person type, after throwing 100 caveats saying, we simply don't know what you're talking about. And so keep that in mind. I'm, I don't want any of you to have the illusion that we guys have a sense of exactly what things are any better than you do. And so keep that in mind. I think seven of you are saying 45 to 50, 55 to 60, where will the percentile be? I don't know, friends. I'm not going into that. In the evening, we'll have a broad stab at that, not too deep, not to, not jumping in too much. But we will have a go at that in the evening, not now. Did you do the acquaintance set? Oh, don't tell me about the acquaintance set. I don't want to be acquainted with it. I did, and I think I... I, I yeah, I, it was one of those things where I didn't get the answer, but I still marked a bunch of answers because I simply could not mark after having come that close. Probably be a big regret once the score comes. It has the potential to take my DALR score to zero. <laughs> New IMs are worth joining, we don't know. Triple five six or triple four nine slot two. I'm not answering that. I don't know that. Ideal number of attempts for slot one. I don't know that. I'm not answering that either. I don't know the answer. Sometimes the attempt number are heavily misleading. I've known several people who attempted fewer questions and get rock sharp percentiles because they get everything right. And so I'm not going to discuss it. There's no ideal number of attempts. Which exam is XIT? It's not XIT, XAT. It is very exciting. Leventing 6 is good. Chandan Varma, there is no ideal number of attempts, my friend. Uh, the, the scores, you can say, are nice. Yeah, but if you have had to put a finger on it, because you've been asking so many times, you say, hey, you need to have one number. Uh, for VRC, perhaps if you had attempted 10, 12 questions, that's brilliant. LRDI, 7, 8 questions, that's very nice. Want eight nine questions that's very nice. Eleven twelve six seven eight nine. 4, 4, If all four questions in quant are correct, that is good. If you have, there's even one error in quant, then that four attempts in quant reaches double territory. Four in DIL are all correct is fine. That's fine. Five questions in QA. If everything is correct, then you may be fine. But if one or two are wrong, then that is dicey. Slot to quant was 30% cake work with 70% nightmare. That's a nightmare. My answer is my one year prep wasted. No, it is not. No, it is not. This whole thing of, hey, if I get this, it's, it, it, it pays off. If I don't get this, it doesn't pay off. That is just a uh, cruel way of looking at it. And so you have to phrase your preparation by saying, hey, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to learn lots of stuff. I'm going to uh, go through this process. And if you do it hand on heart with, with, with sincerity, my gut feel is your numeracy will be will shoot up. Your uh, current affairs in knowledge and your awareness of several topics will just amp up because you're reading tons of interesting stuff in, in BRC. Your ability to grapple with data points and, and uh, handle puzzles will shoot up. So it's going to be the journey itself, in and of itself, is enriching. From a more tangible point of view, it's, it's going to set you up for having a shot at CAT, IFT, XAT, SNAP, and MAT, maybe three of these exams. And then there's a second process after that. If you're prepared well, that is never going to go waste. So it's going to be a, a, a rewarding ride, one way or the other, both tangibly and intangibly. So to, don't phrase it like everything depends on these two hours. It is very important to plan your preparation by not phrasing it like that, and definitely not uh, not not phrase it like that on the day of the exam. It's cruel. Nothing can ride on just a two hours. 
Slot 1 or slot 2 was more difficult. I don't know, my friend. I took slot 1, so I'll claim to my last breath that slot 1 was tougher. But I have no basis for that. How to come out of the cat mode after the exam? Monetary. That's interesting. You're going to be thinking about it. But remember, there's this beautiful saying that time is a brilliant healer. Time as in minutes and seconds, not our competitor. And so it's, it, it works itself out. So you're, you're on a high, give it time, it'll, it'll go to the system. Uh, you're, you're continuously preoccupied by, by some one thing, give it time, it'll blow itself out. You're going to get something that, that comes out. It's, things are never going to be as exhilarating as uh, it, it was probably the moment you exited, if you thought you had done really well, or as uh, annoying if, you, if you're bugged at the end of the exam, or as depressing uh, if you feel like you've completely blown it. It's not going to be like this 48 hours from now. If today is at one point, 48 hours from now is much lower. And then you will digest this and take it in and either which way the feeling will blow itself out. Give it time. We are not going to discuss questions. We have even had this discussion only after slot 3 people have gone into the exam. I have enormous respect for the people who conduct this exam and will follow by their rules. So we are talking anything about this exam. We will, we will follow in letter and spirit what is the framework outlined to us by uh, the people who have created this exam. They have said, look, you can't talk about this exam in a way where it materially affects uh, whoever is taking the exam in that slot. So we will we'll start at even this session only after slot 3 guys have gone in. We will not discuss any questions or answers until CAT posts their response sheet. The moment they do that, we will go berserk. Not to know what the scores are, what the percentiles are, that you will know. But because the interesting questions and percentages that we can solve. We like solving, we like teaching, we like discussing. So we will jump into CAT 2022 and solving and learning mode overnight. Or that is our mechanism of digesting CAT 2021. But nothing before that. So we want questions and answers, we are not the guys. IFT tips, pick yourself up sooner rather than later. One day, two days is fine. Today is still gone. Tomorrow is probably gone. Tuesday evening, set yourself a target and think, look, I'm no longer going to worry about or think about cat. I mean, probably we won't be worrying about cat. Cat is going to go. But the mind is going to go. So, you have to do anything and dial down. Karna. The two days will go off. But then you have to consciously say, I, 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 I need to give my IFT a good shot. And then switch back on. Look, think about what the, the Indian team is going through T20 when they are as hot favourites. They believed they were brilliant. They were there in Dubai and Abu Dhabi and super comfortable with the setting. They had a bunch of brilliant batsmen, a good fielding side. For the first time, a, a crack bowling outfit as well, thanks to Bumrah and Co. And then the first two matches they blew. After that, it was always only, an, only a Hail Mary shot. And they disappeared. And then in three days later, they are playing New Zealand and Kanpur or some other place. So it is, you, you go do the next thing because that, that takes your mind off this. You digest it and carry on with it. We owe it to ourselves to pick it up and have a crack at the next one. Not necessarily successfully crack it, but definitely you have to turn up and do it. In the exam hall, there was a lot of disturbance. Welcome to India, my friend. Always going to be there. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, my exam hall was not that disturbing. It was one super painful thing. We had about one hour and they had all of us seated. And then once the exam began, after 10 minutes, that lady came, several ladies came and said, sign this, uh, and then sign this in the next side and take it. On the middle of reading a passage. I kind of, it was super annoying. And I had to not get irritated. Because I had to go write the exam. That lady doesn't care. And they did it for every single student. I don't know why they did this. We were all sitting and one, twiddling our thumbs. And they didn't, they couldn't come and get that signature done there. So they do some annoying things. It's just like, roll with it. Let it not get to you. Steve Austin, don't worry my friend, wait, 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 hang on, hang on, let the numbers come, then you take a decision, don't worry about it, focus on IFT, focus on, focus on XAT, I can't believe somebody is saying already 24, therefore worried, you're 24, most of your adult life is ahead of you, almost your entire career is ahead of you, if 24 year olds 
crim that I am already 24. What will ask guys do? Yeah, you are 24. There is an age where you shouldn't just say I am already this. That is 24. Time to do something stupid, some stupid things. Yeah. Don't don't ever say I am already 24. Kya kya race hai? 24 may you feel like you are already 24. Pata nahi hai. Exam hai. Likh liya. Hua to hua. Nahi to next one. Is SIBM worth a try? Definitely. SIBM is a good college. Definitely worth a try. Which attempt did you crack CAT 2000? I took my serious CAT in the year 2000. I finished in, I did my MBA from 2001 to 2003. Back then there were no percentiles, no, none of that. So you either got a call or didn't get a call. And call was not physical call, call was an email, call was a letter. They said you've been invited to attend this interview on March 3rd, please make yourself available. And that's it. You, you wouldn't know why you didn't make a cutoff, why you didn't have a, uh, why this section cutoff went against you, or what is the basis, what is your 10 standard score, 12 standard score, which didn't, none of that, none of that. You either got a call from the post or you didn't. That's it. My Hindi is interesting, which is nice. Speak more of Hindi. <laughs> when will you get the response sheet? I think usually I, somebody in my office said December 8th is the date. I don't know why, what the basis was. Based on what had happened in the last two years, December 8th. If you're not right, then find out who said December 8th and ask him how he got it wrong. Sumanta Bhattacharya, LRDI blew me up and shattered. Chalo, yaar, aaj, abhi is minute mein aise lagega. To, chodlo, aaj, dekh lege. Bhoat sare chizhe life mein karne ke liye. So, one LRDI section does not determine what you are about. No, definitely not. There's lots more to happen. And do, don't, for, not for a second, don't you think that, uh, that, that, that I take bad news well. I was super peeved. I, I, I called up and said, look, I have bestest paper. I don't know, I have experience, etc, etc, etc. Et 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 so I did mine. But now that I'm here talking to you guys, and putting on this brave face and saying, don't worry about it. So wine, pick up somebody to wine too. Uh, and then uske baad, draw a line. Say, look, baki aur bhi karne ko hai. Is it worth to give a shot again next year? Who first abad mein karega? Abhi to, pehle have a crack at IFT, have a go at XAT, see the response sheet, see the results. Take that decision in, in chain. Uh, with three years experience, there's, there's nothing preventing you from catting. Like, the guys with three years experience form the median. So if you have four years experience, you're, you're 12 months above median, it's completely fine. So next year you can definitely go and you will not be an outlier. No doubt about it. Uh, but probably a good time to think about GMAT. But all of those decisions are for January, nothing for now. It was my first attempt, it was a disaster. So, yeah, first attempt. Eh? The life gives you second chances because you were simply not ready the first time around. So somebody else was saying, I'm 24 already, what do you do? Chances are you are not. You still have two more years, to, to at least two years to be to be 24 and feel bad about that. So have a smile, have a grow, go at x80, we'll worry about this later on. Messed up the paper due to panic. Now I'm scared of getting panicked in moments. So just look, first of all, stuff happened. First of all, stuff happened. It happened. You have to accept that, look, it's not unique to ourselves. But everybody panics, everybody makes mistakes, everybody makes decision-making errors. Stop call that. As I told you, I made a bunch of decision-making errors. I, I tell myself that in LRDI, I like the number-based puzzle. So two six-question sets. One with numbers in it, one without numbers in it. Guess which one I picked? As my 11th cat. Forget setting mocks and teaching for seven years and teaching for 10, 11 years and taking uh, online classes for eight years and doing a bunch of these gyan videos telling people I said Karna, I should not let one section get to you. We should be very clear about what your strengths and weaknesses are. I like numbers. And I think several of you know that I like numbers. The one six question set with numbers in it. One without numbers in it. <laughs> and I picked the wrong one. So stuff happens. Theek hai. So it's all right. So we owe it to ourselves to say okay. Theek hai, gaya. So we'll do the next one.
And so we should, we should, we should phrase this whole thing as a, uh, as a choice where we're giving ourselves a chance. And if that chance doesn't fall in place, it's all right. This is the same phrase in, famous phrase in Tamil. Malaya pote irika pakaram, vanda malaya, marathi dash. So keep that attitude. I'm not going to translate that. Right? Don't you think cat should be connected twice a year? Oh, Shiva, definitely. I've been uh, pining for that for a long time now. To make life simpler for students. There's so much pressure for one shot of two hours that comes by once every 365 days. It's a complete nightmare. So much rides on that one thing. You're emotionally invested for such a long period. You put several things on hold and you get drained at the end of it. It's almost cruel to have so much riding on such a... It's almost like we're all living the life of the sportsman. So in the finals, the egg shot either or egg shot either, what happened to Ben Stokes uh, in the final and what happened to Kane Williamson. It would have just been just the other way around a couple of millimeters here and there. Lots of luck. They have lots of indeterminable things play a role. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's cruel. That almost like that is the life and story of every uh, individual. So I would love for it to be connected twice or three times a year. Hopefully, the guys who conduct it listen and do that. Lucky Erika with a name like that, you shouldn't be feeling bad. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the score. Don't worry about this one performance. There's no way in hell that any of you is, uh, is, 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 is going to... Is, it's going to accept the fact that a two-hour exam determines what you are capable of. It is one chance. And you can blow that chance and still do wonderfully well in life. If indeed you have blown it, feel bad about it for two days, three days, draw a line, have a crack at the next one. Ideal score for 95 plus, 95 plus, I would say 85, 86, but I'm not sure about this at all. I'll have to do the numbers and kind of digest it slowly. And the 8.30 session will come up with something more tangible, but even then there's going to be no basis for that either. Nilesh, head out. Thanks for the feedback, Nilesh. We will keep sushi. Retain the dark, age 26. 26 is fine, my friend. Don't worry about it. You have three years experience. With four years experience, you can crack cat and do well and go places. You probably should think about GMAT also. You probably not be not definitely take all the OMEDs other exams seriously, and then not have everything riding on one exam. It's simply not worth it. Any course on XAT DM? We have a fabulous XAT crash course which includes DM, and uh, that is being uh, that's going to be released. Uh, it's already live. We're going to do. We'll still send you an email. Maybe tomorrow day after. We're all kind of digesting cat now. In our office, several people take cat. All of us take cat. Several take it seriously as a as a as an aspirant. So therefore, it's cruel to do something the three days before the exam. Tomorrow we'll reboot and we will have a something about XAT. Humorous Sritik, please talk about LOD of section. You know, that's the, practically the only thing I've been talking about so long. VRC slightly easier than last year, perhaps. LRDI is same level of difficulty, trickier because there were fewer questions. Quant, not tough, but lengthy, time consuming, draining because of that. I'm 30 years old, PhD dropout, should I repeat estimating 70th percentile SC category? Sandeep Karat, uh, SC category is a, is a nice handy advantage to have. Therefore, the, the, the bias is towards having another go at it. But uh, when, you say, should, when you say, should I repeat dropout? Please, please, please do not prepare for this exam or any exam in OMET category without having a, a job in hand. You're, this cannot be your only option. This simply cannot be the thing where you're saying, hey, I'm, I'm going to sit and crack cat for next 12 months. I'm preparing for cat. Hoi nahi sakta. Bilkul nahi ho sakta. Chance nahi. Especially for what can happen in the exam. One question, yeah. Ek question aisa ho jata hai. Your DILR percentile can go from 99 to 82. Overall percentile can go from 99.2 to 97.9. Your general category, you get shut down of a bunch of things at 97.9. You feel like itna kiya or I missed by this much. That this much can be feature nahi hota. So, koi bhi chance nahi hai ki everything you put into this basket hoi nahi sakta. So, don't put life on hold in any form for just taking this exam. Impossible. G 
Chiki the gamer, 39 questions, expecting 30 to be right, 99.99 percentile. Kafi tough, 99.99 percentile will not be in the top 20. There are some guys who are, who are phenomenally good. 99.99, the bar is very high, my friend. Ankit Agarwal with seven questions. Will I cross the DLR cutoff if all of them are right? Most definitely yes. If six are right, quite possibly yes. Lovely. I'm going to sign off now, especially because we have one more session coming up like a couple of hours from now where we'll take input from slot one and slot two, both put together. And at 8.30, we'll, we'll, we'll digest all of it and maybe have a stab at this can give you that percentile, that can give you that number, all that. Those of you have done well, many congratulations. The vast majority who are feeling little underwhelmed and drained out and, and peeved and irritated because things didn't go great. That's just life. Pick yourself up. Give it two days. Have a crack at IFT in the next day. We'll, we'll catch back again at 6.30. Best wishes, guys, for, for, for the exam, response sheet, results, OMETs, everything in life. Cheers. Adios.